Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be dealing with that upcoming blizzard, potentially for portions of the Ohio Valley. We're going to be dealing with who could be seeing snowfall, and some of the snowfall will be getting very far to the south into portions of the Tennessee River Valley. Now, we're going to be dealing with a very strong storm moving up through uh, the eastern United States, west of the Appalachian Mountains, and with that, it's going to bring some extreme winds, some potential blizzard conditions because we have those strong winds, and also some first snows of the season for por portions of Tennessee, Kentucky, and portions of the southern Appalachians. We also have some cold air that's going to dig in further to the south of there. We're going to deal with all of that. And we're going to kind of decipher what's going on with the system. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the European model, the GFS model, and the Canadian model and see what all of those models are showing for this event. Now, here is the current National Weather Service page. Also, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. So if you have a question for your area, for example, how much snowfall will I be seeing, just leave in uh, generally an area. So a city name would be great, but you can even do a county name or what part of a state you're in. Uh, and I'll be able to get back to you pretty quickly and answer your comment. Uh, so I answer all your comments. So make sure if you do want a uh, personalized forecast, leave a comment down below. We see some winter weather advisories actually from this system that could become our blizzard over uh, over portions of New Mexico. We also see another area over Maine with a little system that's cutting across portions of the northeast and bringing in some snowfall and rainfall to those areas. Dense fog advisories in effect for portions of Idaho as well as some areas surrounding Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. We see some wind advisories as well as high wind watches and some high wind warnings in effect for parts of Nevada, California, South Dakota, and Montana there with some red flag warnings further to the south and east of there. We also see some freeze warnings and frost advisories in parts of California and Oregon with uh, some air quality alerts in effect for portions of Oregon, uh, Washington, as well as portions of Arizona. So here is the Canadian model, then we'll look at the European model, and then we'll look at the GFS model. Uh, and again, if you have any questions for your area, leave them down below, uh, and I will be answering all of your comments. Now, here's what we're dealing with in our in our atmosphere, because this is what's important. We have to figure out what's happening above our heads to figure out what's going to happen right around our area, in uh, the, around the bottom part of the atmosphere. So we have to go a little bit higher up in the atmosphere to figure out what's actually going on. So let's uh, plot this out. Let's see what's actually happening. We have a high pressure out to the east and portions of Kansas by this point uh, and we're dealing with some colder air further to the north you're gonna see a system pump out f uh, some snowfall proportions of North Dakota northern Minnesota southern Canada and dive along uh, to the south and to the east now what that is going to do is actually bring in some of that colder air on the back side. Here's our system uh, that's back over here in parts of the southern United States. As that pulls up further to the north, that cold air is pushing further to the east. So what you're getting is the system riding up through the, App uh, the Appalachian uh, area, areas east of the Appalachian Mountains and then into the Ohio Valley. With that cold air coming further to the east, this is going to be a very, very interesting setup that we have. And this could potentially be a very big storm. So let's play this out. Let's see how the model hand handles all that data that we just represented there. Now, this front splits into two pieces. You've got one that sits over Texas and another one that sits over the southeast. And you see that one over Texas pulls up to the north and really intensifies. Here's by Saturday night and getting to Sunday morning. Uh, this would be November 29th. So we're dealing with some of that rain moving through portions of the southern plains, portions of the mid-south there. And then as we continue forward into parts of the Tennessee Valley, still all rain by this point. But notice that upper level low pressure system that I was talking about over parts of southern Canada pulling out to the east. Now with that, look at these blue lines. This is indicating where you have roughly your 32 degree line, your snow to rain line, and that is uh, digging very far to the south. Now your system is rotating like this. It's rotating counterclockwise like this. So on the western side of this, it, that those winds are going to be coming out of the, uh, the uh, northeast, out of the north. So that's where you're going to get your snowfall on that western end of the storm. So let's see how the Canadian model handles that. 
as we continue forward, here would be by Monday morning, uh, here would be by right around uh, 7 a.m. Eastern time, and we're looking at most of Indiana in snow, according to this model, parts of the western Tennessee Valley into part, portions of western Ohio, much of uh, the interior parts of Michigan away from the lake effect air or the away from the Great Lake areas uh, where you get just inland, they're seeing some snowfall. That low pressure is pulling ahead into the central Appalachians, and you're draping across a lot of rainfall for some areas over the eastern seaboard. Now, as that moves forward, you're dealing with, look at, uh, just something that I want you guys to look at. Look at these isobars that are, uh, these are these black lines across the screen. You have a 993 low pressure system and you have a 1035 high pressure system. Now, the atmosphere wants to get to equilibrium, which is basically where every single area is over, like, uh, it's basically over the same amount of uh, energy and still producing the same amount of energy. So the atmosphere wants to get to a flat zonal pattern. Now, because of this huge system that moves through the only way for the atmosphere to get to equilibrium is by burning off energy and the only way it can do that is by producing wind or producing heavy precipitation and it's going to do both in this case scenario you see some heavy rains uh, out along the eastern part of the system and all across the system you're dealing with those uh, either he all, all across the system you're dealing with either heavy precipitation or you're dealing with those strong winds and that's the way the atmosphere is going to get rid of all that energy that the system is producing now also look at this uh, very cold air that's dipping into portions of the central United States and you can really tell where that cold air is. It's dipping kind of straight southward with the system as it pulls further to the north and now by this point, this would be by Monday night, uh, December or this would actually be going into December 1st uh, and then here would be by Tuesday morning and probably right around 7 a.m. Tuesday morning. We're dealing with still those winds very strong but it's going to kind of sit over Michigan by this point. Now you're going to see the system dips further to the south and it just sits there with that cold air moving through and you're going to probably be in some snow bands according to this model for another day or two if this were to be the case. Now look at this, it just sits over here and this is by Tuesday night. And uh, this system is still over southern Ontario, Canada, and kind of crossing the border between Canada and the United States quite frequently. And as we continue forward, it pushes a little bit further to the north, but still, look at that much of Michigan into Ohio, Pennsylvania, still under some of that snowfall. And it only pulls out as we get to Thursday night. Now, here's the Canadian model's total snowfall for this event. And we're looking at maybe closer to 12, uh, probably 6 to 12 inches in many of these areas. But the biggest issue is going to be that reduced visibility if those winds are strong enough over the area with snowfall. Now, let's look at the uh, European model, uh, and this is usually the best model for storm track, and the good way to look at these models is the European model usually handles storm track quite well, the GFS model usually underestimates snowfall, and the Canadian model usually overestimates snowfall. So, usually you want to take an average between the Canadian and GFS for snowfall, and then kind of take where that snowfall is and shift it to wherever the storm track of the European is, and that's basically the best way to get a good forecast, and that's the best way that I look at most of the this model data and that's mainly how I interpret it. Now we're dealing with that system by Sunday night pulling up to the north and you start to see some of that snow on that western flank of the system. Now by this point, uh, this would be by Monday right around 7 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Central Time, we're dealing with over parts of Indiana, western Kentucky, eastern Illinois, Michigan, mixing over portions of western Ohio and areas further to the south and west. All of those areas are in some sort of wintry precipitation, and this system is only pulling further to the north, and what you're actually going to see is actually now on, on the entire western side, including the southwestern side of the system, you're dealing with that cold air being pushed into the system, and with with that, you're going to get some fairly heavy precipitation rates in the form of snowfall and also in the form of rainfall as you get further to the east because we could be dealing with some flooding rains. Now, as we get to Monday night into Tuesday morning, the system is still there and it's still pumping out a combination between uh, precipitation from the system and a, com and a, a kind of a combination between lake effect and the system. So you're combining what you would get from a regular lake effect event and what you're getting from the system and that's going to end up being quite a lot of snowfall out of this. And this would be by Tuesday morning, here's by Tuesday evening, uh, and then as we get to Wednesday morning and into the, uh, late, uh, the late morning into 
into the early afternoon on Wednesday. It's really pulling out by this point. Scattered light snow showers uh, over much of the Ohio Valley by this point. Now, that system really uh, kind of gets rid of itself. It kind of moves out uh, and further to the north, just dealing with some scattered lake effect by this point. Now, here's what the European model shows for snowfall in these areas, 6 to 12 inches uh, over much of these areas. And even as you get into those pinks, maybe closer to 20 inches if the European model were to be correct. Now, let's look at another uh, model represent, uh, rep representation. We'll look at that in just a little bit. We're going to look at the GFS model, which has really changed overnight. But first, I want to look at a couple of parameters. Now, here's the total precipitation, uh, including rain and snowfall. But uh, I would really look at this only if you live east of the Appalachian Mountains, where it's going to be mainly uh, mainly a rain event. Some areas could pick up as much as two to three or even four uh, inches of rain. And I wouldn't be surprised if a couple areas pick up closer to five inches of rain, especially over southeast eastern New England. That looks to be your bullseye for rainfall. Now, here are your uh, low temperatures. I just took an arbitrary day. This is Tuesday, December 1st in the morning hours. Here are your low temperatures, and I, it's not really the intensity of the cold. It's just how far south that 32 degree line is getting. That is really striking to me. Now, look at that. On the bottom part of your screen, you can see those temperatures down into the 20s for portions of uh, the northern Gulf states and getting down closer to the eastern seaboard. And as that that system, the system even it hasn't even pu pushed further enough to the east where areas over the east coast would be getting into that cold air. But eventually, uh, probably around, around the second or third, it is going to turn much colder for the entire eastern United States. And with those winds, which uh, these are in knots, uh, gusting to closer to 60 or maybe even 65 miles per hour along the east coast, here's what your uh, wind chill temperatures are going to be like uh, combining that on Tuesday morning. Look at that. We have some maybe single digit uh, feels like temperatures for portions of Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Wisconsin. This is going to be a very, very chilly event as well. Now, also something that we want to look at for that blizzard condition criteria. Here are your visibilities in those darker grays. That's where you're under half a mile visibility. Uh, and it is getting fairly, uh, fairly uh, low visibility for many of these areas into Kentucky, Indiana, much of Ohio uh, and getting through portions of the Mid-Atlantic. You guys are dealing with some very, very bad visibility. And if some snow is coming down, don't be surprised if if this scenario is to be true, that in if this were to be true from the European model, in this case scenario, you would be seeing a blizzard warning. I'm not saying that is going to be the case, but if this were to be true from the European, you would be seeing a blizzard warning being issued for some of these areas. Now, let's look at the GFS model, the final model that I want to show you. You see that front stalled out over the southern Gulf states, and then you continue forward and you start to see that. That system move up into parts of Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Louisiana, and it really pulls out further to the north. So you start to see some of that scattered rain move through the mid-south uh, portions of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, and parts of southern Mississippi, Alabama, as well as portions of the panhandle of Florida. This would be by Sunday morning. Here's by uh, Sunday, uh, right around 12 p.m. Central Time. You're dealing with still some rain for those areas, but the real snow is going to start as we get to probably right around Monday, uh, around 6 a.m. Central Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Look at those winds with those isoparts uh, kind of clumped all together. That's going to be some strong wind as well. Look at the state of Indiana, parts of Ohio, parts of Michigan. You guys are dealing with some heavy snowfall by that point. And as we continue forward, that snow actually gets on the southern side of the system where most of that precipitation is so as that cold air wraps around on the back side of this you are going to be kind of mixing the heaviest precipitation with the coldest air and that is going to be not a good scenario if you don't like cold it'll be a good scenario if you do like cold and snow however uh, and that would be by Monday right around uh, 6 uh, or actually right around 12 p.m. Uh, central time uh, right around 1 p.m. eastern time and continuing this forward, you start to see that system pulls up to the north. You do actually see some dry air trying uh, to push into the system from the south, kind of like this. We're dealing with that cold air wrapping around the system on uh, on, the, on the western side of that system. And then you're dealing with all that moisture being pulled up and funneled up from the Atlantic where all of that moisture is coming from. So that's going to make for a very, very interesting setup. And this is uh, kind of like an on-land hurricane, you could say, if this were to be the 
particular case because of how strong these winds are going to be and how well developed this low pressure system is and as we continue forward this would be by Tuesday morning uh, and it's still wrapping around through portions of the Great Lakes and still impacting some of those areas with some decent lake effect here's what the GFS model shows if you remember yesterday's video these numbers were maybe cut in uh, probably you could take a third of what these numbers were and that's what the GFS was showing yesterday so the GFS is almost tripled the snowfall totals in some of these areas so definitely it's gotten on board with, the, with, with what the Canadian and the European model are now showing and this is only increasing my confidence now this is again not a forecast this is just me looking at the models with you interpreting the data and analyzing the data with you guys to give you an accurate look at what's happening and hopefully I did a good job of that uh, and probably by Saturday I should have a good uh, good idea of what's happening and I'll probably put out a snowfall forecast on this YouTube channel so make sure if you have any questions leave them down below also uh, if you uh, do want to support the channel please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss another upload and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye